In the creative world, especially in logo animation, everything starts with the idea. You can master advanced techniques, but without a strong idea, it's just good work, not great work. But here's the catch. Not even good idea is enough on its own. For example, check out this animation. It looks nice, but feels empty. Now, this one seems more creative, but something's still missing. So how do you take your animations from good to great? Look at this animation. There's a lot happening, and it instantly feels more polished than the others. In today's video, I'll show you some of the most powerful tricks in After Effects. To make your animation stand out. Let's start by breaking down the logo. This is a crucial step before animating in After Effects. This logo has seven components and will animate each one separately. Once that's done, we'll mix and match the animations to find the perfect timing and create a cohesive composition. This simple trick works for almost any logo and makes the whole process easier and way more fun. Let's start by selecting the layer. Hold Ctrl and double-click the pen behind tool to center the anchor point. Next, select both layers, press P to open position properties and add keyframes. Move them 10 frames forward in the timeline. Align the layers to the center for the first keyframe and repeat this for both layers. Now press F9 to ease the keyframes. Open the graph editor and adjust the motion curves to look like this. Next, press R for rotation properties and add keyframes. Press U to reveal all of them, then move the rotation keyframes 10 frames forward. Adjust the first rotation keyframes for both layers, ease them with F9, and adjust the motion curves for a fast start and slow end. Move the final rotation keyframes 10 frames further down in the timeline. Now right click on an empty area and create a null object. Parent both layers to the null layer. Select the null, press P and add position keyframes. Move it 10 frames forward. Then adjust the start keyframe by shifting the ball slightly up and to the left. Use the pen tool and click on a point to adjust the motion path. Ease the keyframes, go to the graph editor and adjust for a slow start with acceleration towards the end. Finally, select the ball layers, press U and move all keyframes 5 frames forward. And just like that, the first component is ready. Select the pen tool and draw a stroke over the text. Make sure it slightly overlaps the text. Next, add a trim path effect. Set a keyframe for the end property and move it forward in the timeline. Then set another keyframe at the start, adjusting the end value to the zero. From the track matte options, select the stroke layer to apply the animation to the text. Repeat the same steps for the second text layer. Now offset the layers in the timeline and pre-compose them. Search for the fill effect and apply it to the pre-composed layer. Add a keyframe to the color property and change the color. Press U to reveal the keyframes, then move the keyframes further in the timeline. Adjust the start keyframe to the red color. Finally, press S for scale and add a keyframe and move it forward in the timeline. Set another keyframe by scaling up the layer. And that's it, your text animation is ready. Click on the layer and press P. Add a keyframe and move it further in the timeline. Add another one and move the ship to the right. Press F9 to ease the keyframes and go to the graph editor. We need a fast start and slow end, so adjust the curve similar to this one. Ship is ready and we can move to the other component. The next component is the shapes of the logo, and animating this is probably the easiest so far. Start by selecting the layer and adding an offset path effect. Set a keyframe for the amount property and adjust it to zero. Then add another keyframe at the beginning and adjust the amount until the shape disappears. Next, copy the offset path effect, select the next layer, navigate to the contents and simply paste the effect. Ensure the timeline indicator is at the beginning to avoid any mistakes. Repeat these steps for the remaining layers. If any shape doesn't fully disappear, press U to reveal the keyframes and adjust the first keyframes amount. If the animation speed doesn't feel right, 
select all keyframes, hold Alt and drag them along the timeline to adjust their timing. And now we're ready to move on the main element of the logo. We have three separate layers, the main body, tail and fork. Let's start with the body layer. Cut the layer by pressing shift ctrl D. Then bring the cut layer to the top. Add scale and position keyframes at the end of the timeline. At the beginning, scale up the layer so it fills the screen. Now copy the starting keyframes and paste them 20 frames further. Next, let's quickly create a background. Double click the rectangle tool to add a solid background. From the contents, delete the four groups because we will not need them. Then search for the path and put a keyframe for each of them. Now bring the timeline indicator to the beginning. Then use the pen tool to adjust the head shape, giving it a 3D rotation effect. To enhance the 3D effect during the head rotation, you'll want to simulate how perspective works in real life. As the head rotates, one eye should appear smaller because it moves away from the viewer, while the other eye remains larger since it's closer to the viewer. Double-click the eye to bring up the bonding box, and adjust its size and position to match the head rotation. Now click the mouth path and close it by adjusting it using the pen tool. Select the mouth keyframes and move them further along the timeline. Then click on the eye to close it by adjusting the shape. You'll see a keyframe created in the timeline. To create a blinking effect, copy the first keyframe and paste it at the end. Repeat these steps for the second eye to complete the blinking animation. Next, focus on the head rotation. Select the keyframes controlling the head and ease them. Open the graph editor and adjust the motion curves for smoother movement. When animating the mouth opening, ease those keyframes too. Adjust the graph for a slow start and fast end. Then go back to the scale and position keyframes for the body, ease them and adjust the motion curves to match Hideo's smooth motion. Now add a null object and set position of keyframes to move the entire head from down to up. Ease these keyframes and adjust their motion curves for a polished look. Press U to reveal all keyframes and fix the timing of each layer. Bring up the tail layer and add the CC Bendit effect. Adjust the effect points around the tail and set a keyframe for the bend property. Adjust the starting keyframe so the tail bends naturally. Ease the keyframes, adjust their timing and then we'll move on to the fork. For the fork layer, add two keyframes for position. Use the pen tool to adjust the path, creating a natural movement. Then add rotation keyframes and rotate the fork upside down. Ease all the position and rotation keyframes and adjust the motion curves in the graph editor. And that's it, our animation is complete. Lastly, after animating all the components, let's take a final look at how everything appears in the timeline. This is your chance to tweak the timing and adjustments to achieve the best result. For the layer named black, it appears by animating the opacity property. Set it to fade in from 0 to 100. Now let's add bounce effect. Pre-compose the layers and add scale keyframes. Start with 3 keyframes, 100, 90 and back to 100. This will create a simple bounce. To make it loop seamlessly, add 3 more scale keyframes at the end. 100, 110 and finally 0. And that's it for today, if you enjoyed the tutorial, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.